Hi guys, it's Mrs. Santiago here, and today I am going to help you with the notes for Los Vegetales. You can see that I'm in your OneNote. I'm in Chapter 6, Page 8, Los Vegetales Notes. I'm going to eliminate the Table of Contents information so that I can make the notes page bigger so that you can see what I'm doing. Now we've talked about this, the first box, whenever it has an extra block on it, it's to indicate that we're talking about the category of something. So this category is Los Vegetales. There is another word, obviously this one is a cognate, vegetables, but there's another word that you'll hear, which is Las Verduras. And I like to say that is also a little bit of a cognate because what do we see at the beginning? That looks like a color, verde. So it's like saying the greens, las verduras, los vegetales. The next one over is las zanahorias, zanahorias. So I remember I like to eat carrots at zany hours. Okay, las zanahorias. To the right, it's filled in for you, el broccoli, el broccoli. If we go down a row. El apio is written in for you. Again, not even close to a cognate. Does not look like the word celery. El apio. Two words for beans. They are a mainstay of the Latin American diet. So the first word is las abichuelas. Wait, not cuelas, chuelas. Abichuelas. The second word are los frijoles. So las habichuelas or los frijoles. To the right, the next word is peas. And peas in Spanish is los guisantes. Los guisantes. So, so far we've got las verduras, los vegetales, las zanahorias, el broccoli. El apio, los frijoles, las habichuelas, los guisantes. The next row, the first two are written in for you. La calabaza. So calabaza is really a word for squash in general. Um, here we've got butternut squash. La calabaza. To the right, we have a long word. Las habichuelas tiernas. So habichuelas, habi Chuelas, there should be an H in there. So it's abi chuelas tiernas. Tiernas. Um, tierna is the word for veal. So it's actually young, right? Tender. It's that idea of young and tender. Okay, so young tender beans. The next one to the right, we have a variety of las papas. Las papas. Sometimes you might hear patata, but really it's just las papas. The next row, the first picture is las, or is it los? It's las cebollas. Remember the double L equals the Y sound. Las cebollas. To the right, you could make this stuff into an ensalada. What is that? In Spanish, la lechuga. It's kind of a great word. La lechuga. And to the right of that, you have las aceitunas. And aceitunas can be aceitunas negras or aceitunas verdes. Sometimes you like one or the other. Very few people like both. I like Las Aceitunas Negras. Um, my sister likes Las Aceitunas Verdes. Now let's practice the words from these two lines. La Calabaza. Las Habichuelas Tiernas. Las Papas. Las Cebollas. La Lechuga. Las Aceitunas Negras or Verdes. Let's go down to page two. The first line, all three are written in for you. Los pepinos, 
los pepinos, los asparagos, los asparagos, la espinaca, la espinaca. In the next line, the first word is el maíz. I think of a corn maize in the fall, el maíz. The Native Americans called it maize, and that's probably where the word came from because it was grown here in the United States. So, el maíz. The next one we should know, right? El chile. Remember, there are over 50 varieties of chili peppers in Mexico. If you have more than one, you would say los chiles. It should be in, not chili like the firm. It should be chile. El chile, los chiles. To the right, we have el coliflor. El coliflor. Let's review those first two lines completely. Los pepinos. Los asparagos, la espinaca, el maíz, el chile, el coliflor. The next line. The first one actually has a few different words. Um, you might hear el ungo. My favorite one and the one used probably most often is los champiñones. Champignones, so that needs a tilde. I think that mushrooms are the breakfast of champions. Los champignones. To the right of los champignones, we have la ensalada. La ensalada, definitely a cognate there. La ensalada. Now, we just learned the word for potato was la papa. So what do you think that word horneada means? Remember back to the chapter on kitchen and house, we said that the oven was called El Orno. So Orneada, we're describing the potato. Okay, so it is the potato baked. So the baked potato, La Papa Orneada. Now the last one, kind of a weird shape. It's not a cebolla, although it looks a little bit like one. It is called El Ajo. Do you know what that is in English? El ajo. We actually call one little piece of it, which is kind of weird, we call it el diente de ajo. Diente is also the word for a tooth. So what do we have a tooth of? That's right, el ajo, the garlic. Let's review the four words that we learned at the bottom. Los champiñones, la ensalada, la papa horneada, and el ajo. I've left two spaces blank in case there is a vegetable that I did not cover that is something you and your family eat pretty regularly. We could add that word as well. Okay, you should now have your completed notes on los vegetales or las verduras. Gracias.